Well, the movie's hitting theaters this week, and just in time for that, another movie-inspired Spider-Man game is also hitting shelves. Most of Spider-Man's forays into the video game market are reasonably well done, and this newest adventure lives up to previous standards. Activision and Treyarch team up on Spider-Man 2 for a movie-themed game that seems to aim a little too high. While the open-ended design is appealing, some of the gameplay mechanics and graphics offset what would otherwise be a pretty short, simple game. The main appeal in Spider-Man 2 is his unique web-swinging action set in an open-ended design city. There's an easy and complex version of the controls for swinging, but because swinging is one of Spider-Man's best features, you should get comfortable with the latter. Swinging from building to building or using the web zip move to dash around through the air in a large rendition of New York is a great deal of fun. The game loosely follows the plot of the film, which pits Spider-Man against the eight-limbed menace Dr. Octopus, as well as a few extra enemies like Rhino and Mysterio. For a game based on a movie, it's relatively short on story, implementing a handful of cutscenes to accompany the more relevant sequences. The open-ended nature of Spider-Man 2 seems daunting, but in truth, much of your time is spent uncovering relatively little content. The game's chapters feed you objectives as you proceed through the story, enabling you to earn hero points. You need to meet a set number of hero points to advance to the next chapter. These points can be earned in a number of different tasks that usually involve you saving the day for some poor citizen. Most of the tasks are not particularly interesting and they actually get really repetitive. Unfortunately, the hero points are used to upgrade your abilities and make for a necessary evil. These tasks seem like they were designed to merely pad out the game's length. Thankfully, the more significant missions are more interesting. You'll have to take on master criminals, you'll explore a fun house, you'll have to navigate a hovering obstacle course in order to prove that you aren't a hoax, and so on. Most of these challenges aren't especially difficult, and you'll likely get through each one on your first or second attempt. But Spidey does more than just swing from his webs. There's also a great deal of fighting in the game. Combat is a simple button-mashing affair. You can purchase new combo attacks and other moves that can make the combat a little more interesting. The problem is that most of the enemies are real pushovers offering no real challenge to combat. Your spider senses alert you to incoming attacks, allowing you ample time to dodge incoming hits. Enemies can be tough in groups, especially when they're all armed and firing away on you at a rapid pace. But with enough hopping around and constant pounding on the attack button, even the most dire looking odds aren't insurmountable. Spider-Man has some nice graphics and the city easily takes center stage as the star. The city is huge and maintains a solid frame rate even when you're swinging through at a high speed. The Spider-Man character model looks nice and animates really fluidly. The game does a good job with the characters that are based on actors from the film. When you're out of costume, you look like Tobey Maguire and Doc Ock looks like Alfred Molina. The rest of the game's models are pretty bad looking. They're decidedly last generation, from blocky models to a lack of facial animation. Above all, the web swinging action looks good. The webs actually attach to objects this time around, so you aren't just swinging around and by shooting webs into the sky. The game has a lot of voice work in it, most of which has been performed by the cast of the film. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is on par with his effective, understated performance in the film, although Kirsten Dunst's lines as Mary Jane Watson come off as a, a little wooden. Do I look fat in these tights? Part of the problem is that the script for the game isn't as well written as the script for the movie. It'll stand fine on its own, but if you've seen the movie, you'll be wondering why a few sequences were needlessly rewritten. This version of Spider-Man 2 is available for the Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2. The game makes fairly intensive use of a lot of different buttons, which makes the PlayStation 2 version the best in terms of control. But graphically, the Xbox version comes out on top with its cleaner look. Regardless of these pretty standard differences, the game holds up pretty well on all three platforms, so you aren't really missing out by getting one version over another. On paper, Spider-Man 2 is a huge, huge game. There are tons of little challenges and hidden items to find all over a large city. But the game design doesn't take full advantage of the huge city, and instead you're usually just repeating the same seven tasks over and over again, with some unique challenges sprinkled in to keep things moving. Even with all this repetition, Spider-Man 2 is still a good game, but it also feels like a missed opportunity. With some more variants in the mission design, Spider-Man 2 truly could have been something special.